The latest masking features in Lightroom have brought us to be able to do incredible things. But with the word that AI masking is actually coming to capture one, which has been struggling for years to catch up, well, this is great because the competition is going to make masking across the board even better. But today I'm going to show you how to mix things like object masking with speed masking and the tools that allow us to mask so fast and efficiently. The beauty of masks is you can come in and you can have an image like this. I'll usually edit the base edit first because it uses less system resources. So I might use something like Filmist or Silver, or in this case, a natural HDR preset to get a good develop. But now I want to do a mask to bring back the sky and balance out this kind of HDR-ish scene. Now you can manually build and tune your masks, but the far better way is to use speed masks. Now, a lot of you use my elegant speed masks, but you can also make your own. So anything I'm showing you today, you can do yourself as well. Let's go to the classic Luma Mix. What it's going to do with a speed mask is it's a develop preset. All the masks are saved in a preset. They're all tuned. We can, of course, modify them, but it applies all these masks at once. And there's a huge feature that's vastly ignored in the way that masks work in Lightroom. If you apply them as a speed mask, you can turn them up and down as a unit, not just an individual layer. I can take this entire effect and turn it up, or I can dial it back so it's a little more subtle and less HDRified. And it's changing the settings of that effect globally across one, two, three, 10 layers that have all been tuned and built in to this speed mask. How does that enter though with the latest features like object masking? Object masking is really cool. I could take a street scene like this, for example. I've already edited this with a filmic kind of look. And now I'm going to go in and say, all right, let's use my AI street combo. This is a fairly low key, but it kind of helps with the skies, the dynamic range balance. And you can see that it just made two AI masks, but they're already tuned and feathered and made real nice, right? I can now turn them up or down to dial this in. I don't need to go super far on this. So I'm actually going to only go about 70% on this. Let's say I want to turn down the overall exposure a little bit more, make it a little more shadow hacky and moody right? Like I talk about in my shadow hackers workshops over on the site, everything doesn't need to be lifted shadows. I might add a little more warmth. I might do a little exposure and a little more aggressive on the highlight recovery just to get a nice balance. But maybe I want this bus to kind of pop. And this is where adding a manual mask can come in. You don't really want to do all the other masks manually every time, because when you start stacking all those masks, you can end up with a lot of tuning required to get them to balance. But an object mask is a manual thing. If I go to object masking, you can see I can paint it in, or my favorite is just to do a rectangle select. Okay. Now, if I select the bus here, let's see how well it does. I'm going to select the bus and it's going to give me, boom, there's my mask. Let's see what it did. Okay. The bus is selected is just do a little bit of a curve, or I could actually go up here and could also use one of the local adjustment presets that come in elegance Four as well, and just dodge it and mix it up a little bit. And then I could manually control it and just dial it in. I don't have to do a lot. I'm just trying to make this pop just a little bit. So there's kind of a little bit of a three dimensional feel to it. And you can see here, we don't need to go far. What we do with this is we're maintaining shadow of the scene, the richness of the scene, but we can select individual objects. And that's really all there is to it. Of course, you can use ob of course, you can use object masking as add or subtractive parts to another mask. There's all kinds of things you can do. So you could combine a object mask with a mask that you've already added in your speed mask. Are you see where I'm going here with this? You start with a good base develop preset, then you add a speed mask to get the combination of masks and refine it. And then if you need to, you can do a little bit of extra object masking. Don't think by always using object masking that you're going to get a better result. Use it as addition to Lightroom's already very extensive AI. It can already select the people, the hair, the eyes, the face, the subject, the background. You don't need to try and use object masking for that. Let me show you what I mean. If I go to the masking tools and go to object mask, you can see here that if I select my model, with the square, it's going to give me a mask and it's pretty good, but it's missing a little bit on the leg and stuff like that. Let's undo that and just do a subject mask and see if it does a better job. The subject mask is a little more precise. Yes, it's getting a little bit of the post here, but it's also 
masking around the leg a bit better. Generally speaking, the specific masks that are already in Lightroom, you're probably going to find they're better than an object mask because they know what they're looking for. Once you start applying speed masking and then just use object masking where needed, you're going to be doing crazy and amazing things. Let's take this portrait here and just go to something like the Portrait AI Full Glamour from Elegance 4. Now, this is actually a pretty big update that I did for my Elegance Speed Masks, and you're going to see across the board a lot of refinements all marked with 4.7, so a lot of just tuned up mixes all the way through. I'm making this video right along with the latest 4.7 update of Elegance 4, which just has a lot of updates and tweaks and tuning across the board. The key, if you're making your own Speed Mask presets, if you're not using these, is that you're making a combination. If you look at this Glamour mix here, it's making like 10 different masks that are using the eye but each and every one of these has been tuned to be balanced with a lot of situations. Always the secret to making good presets and why I'm always pushing updates is you got to keep tuning. You can't just save something that worked on one image and say, hey, I'm going to use this on everything. If you want a preset that's going to work across many images with the least amount of modification of individual layers, you have to try it. You have to test it. You have to experiment. And that's why I'm always tuning and refining my own presets. You can see I did all of this with a click, right? But here's where, again, it gets crazy. If I want to go a bit more intense with this edit, I can just turn this up. Look how we can go from very low key to extreme and get this really refined glamour edit with just a slider. It's changing every single layer individually. Now, do you want to go this far? Maybe not, but that's the beauty. You can also go less. You can put it wherever you want. While the object selection tool isn't exactly something you build into a preset because it's for a specific object, when features like this come out, I'll say, okay, how can we adapt and make our speed masks more refined and more tuned, knowing that we have these other features available over here to add on top of those when needed. There's even some new stuff like the AI basic soft tone for balancing out images that are really contrasty. But in general, just a lot of updates across the board that are going to make your speed masking easier and more refined. Here's a contrasty sunset portrait I edited with silver, right? But the skin tones on the face, like maybe I want to dial it back a little bit. So I'm going to actually go here to Elegance. Let me put on the AI basic soft tone. Now, the difference between the basic AI portrait presets and the full, the full AI portrait speed masks are giving you everything. Eyes, face, everything all tuned, ready to go. And then you can turn it up, down, adjust. And there's different versions of them, more subtle, like the classic, glamour, contrasty, etc. But these basic ones are actually really useful. They're just basically using a background and a subject layer or a combination thereof. It's sometimes a good idea to use the least amount of layers necessary because the more layers you add, the more the more process intensive you get, the more complex things can get. But I can control kind of how intense my tone is on this by just turning this simple mask up and down. I don't have to go find the formula every time. I don't even have to pull out the local adjustment preset and apply it to a layer. When you save all of your masks into a developed preset, they become a speed mask and it applies all in one on an image you apply it to. Then when I get all of them, if I'm doing a session and I tweak with it and play with it and it's perfect, I combine speed masks, I maybe do some different adjustments. Now I can copy and paste that to all of my images. I hope we see this in the coming AI tools in Capture One, but Capture One is notoriously bad at integrating these kind of tools, layers, things like that, into the ability to save into presets or styles in Capture One because they just don't listen that well to us users when it comes to needing to create really great workflow processes. Let's just look at one more because I want to show you a neat trick that you can do where you're combining. So if I come into here, let's look at this. I've done this with a film this preset. It's processed. It's looking good, but let's apply a speed mask. I'm going to put Fortress Full Classic on this, and you can see that I now have all the control. It's built all the masks for eyes and face. So I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. It doesn't need to be that intense. And I'm actually going to combine this by turning down the master exposure outside of the mask just a little bit. Here's the thing. We've applied all of this and I can then come and select, let's say the eyes and adjust those. But there's a secret if you're using my speed masks or building your own that you can also have speed masks that affect more individual things. They don't necessarily build 10 layers. So because all these layers are named, something else you don't get if you manually build the mask. If I switch this to AI full glamour, you can see that it actually modifies the existing layers. It doesn't have to rebuild them all from scratch. I'm going to undo that because I liked the full classic that we did on this. But I can also go to something like Portrait AI, only eyes. You see what this does? This is only 
adjusting the eyes. Now, we already had an eye layer. It didn't add a new one. It just modified the one that was there. The beauty of this is because we just added this as a speed mask develop preset, we now have the ability to turn it up and down. So we just applied that one preset that only affects eyes. Now when we turn the up and down slider, we're only turning up and down the eyes. We adjusted the master preset to the way we liked it. Then I just, then we just came in and added an eye preset and only adjusted that separately. Do you see what's happening here? This is why you have to be using speed masks. And it's fine if you want to tinker and tune and build your layers and name them all and make your own. And if you want to go check out mine and download them and support the channel, that's great too. I promise they're going to save you a ton of time and you won't regret it. They're guaranteed. If you have Elegance 4, download the latest 4.7 version over on the site. And if you don't, start using some kind of speed masks and mix those with the object selection. So start with your base develop preset, then add your master speed mask to tune it in, turn it up and down as needed, mix it around, add extra speed masks like the eyes. Then if you need to only go to those object selection specific presets, because those as those are going to allow you to tune even further. And if after that you still need to do more, you can manually brush in, burn, dodge, etc. But if you're using well-built speed masks, most of the manual stuff is not going to need much. You're just going to kind of be able to breeze right through that because the heavy lifting is going to have been done by the speed masking presets. All right, I hope you guys found this useful. I will keep you informed as the latest features come out because I'm expecting that as we see Capture One come out with AI masking, that's what they're saying is gonna happen, that Lightroom is then gonna come out and start doing even more. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, guys, and we will see you on the next one. Peace out.